Hey everybody, and welcome to Tuesday. Uh, here we are, and we are at lesson 19, and we are going to learn about one of the most important tools in all of the Constitution, and it is called the Bill of Rights. Now, the Bill of Rights is an interesting thing because uh, the history behind it is like super interesting. Uh, it's like this kind of aspect of like trust or not trust, whether or not we trust the government, whether or not we want, we don't. And in, in addition, what are the rights in which individuals have um, to protect them from either the government, either state, federal, uh, and protect actually their liberty and freedom? Um, so we're going to go through that and... The aim is, and I'm going to take myself off so you can see it. The aim is, what is the Bill of Rights of the United States and why is it important? So we had our intro. We're going to go into what the Bill of Rights is. Uh, we'll watch a brief video with a couple of questions that you're going to write in your notebooks for uh, your notes. Uh, remember, you do have an exam coming up actually on Friday, so make sure that you are writing your notes. Uh, we'll go through some scenarios of the Bill of Rights and an exit ticket. Um, you have an exam Friday on the Constitution, May 1st. Holy cow, we are in May. Yeah, I know, it's nuts. But, yes, you have an exam, and it is on the Constitution. So it means that it's on the Great Compromise, it's on the Legislative, the Executive, and the Judicial. It will be on the Bill of Rights, right? Um... So please make sure that you are taking notes, because if you're not taking notes, then I don't know how you're going to study for this. And if you think that you could just go online and find the answers to it, that's not going to be the case, because my questions are specific to the notes themselves. Some of us actually have been relying upon in the internet too much, and it's not helping your grade. A uh, big shout out, by the way, to the people who have been coming to my small groups. You are awesome, and it's going to help you a ton. When it comes to this exam, so remember, I have office hours every day, and I am always in there. So if you want to actually do office hours, they're open to you. All right, let's do this. So, as we said, ratifying the Constitution, we're going back to like the little bit of the history part to understand what are the rights in which we have, right? So after the Constitutional Convention and the Great Compromise, many states were scared that the Constitution was too much power. It gave the executive too much power, the legislative, and the judicial. And people said, well, what about not only the small states, but because, you know, there was even out in the legislative, but now it's like, what does the individual, what is the guarantee that you, the person, is protected from your government, right? From the federal government and the state government, just in case, right? Like, the idea that the Constitution was so powerful, um, you know, really kind of scared a lot of people because it's like, well, this kind of sounds a little bit like you're giving all the power to the government again. And the Articles of Confederation wanted to protect from that because of, you know, the revolution and, and England. So Congress sent um, the Constitution to the states, but there were states that said no to the Constitution. So it was like, oh, hey, we worked really hard on creating this Constitution. However, um, Rhode Island, Vermont, and North Carolina are like, no, we don't want to pass it. So what's the option and what's the idea? Like, what should they do? Well, um, it, got, it kind of gets into this aspect, which is the video. And the video is a YouTube video. Uh, it's like a crash course. It's really, really great. I think he's really funny as well. Um, and I want you to answer these four questions. Uh, and remember, this is a two-day lesson, uh, which means that, like, if for some reason uh, in your other classes you're really overwhelmed, right, Two days, but it is due, right, on Wednesday, so you need to make sure that it's done. Um, but take the time to be able to ch chip it down, okay? So don't freak out. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Butterbaugh, you gave me four questions for our video. Ah, I'm going to G-chat him. It's okay. Don't worry. It's two days. So, four questions. In 1787, uh, how was the public opinion, what was the public opinion on uh, the Constitution? According to the video, who did the Federalists represent in the United States? We're learning about Federalists and actually someone who's heading them. Uh, why did Anti-Federalists think being small would be better, which is kind of getting into another political party. And we will talk about that actually in our next lesson. And who lost the debate on the Constitution and what was the compromise? And it's getting back to like that great compromise we were talking about, but this is a refresher plus more information. Take your notes. Make sure you got them. Federalists and Anti-Federalists will be on that exam. Okay, come back to me. Yeah, so, like, you know, we had Federalists and Anti-Federalists, right? 
for the Federalists, we had people like Alexander Hamilton and um, James Madison who were seriously focused on getting this Constitution um, passed. However, you have that guy, TJ, right? Thomas Jefferson, um, who was totally against it. And remember, we learned from Thomas Jefferson where he said, like, um, every now and then, blood needs to be spilled upon actually the tree of liberty for it to grow, right? Like, I'm paraphrasing, obviously, so if other people are watching this and they're uh, well-versed in it, paraphrasing, thank you. But, like, Thomas Jefferson was totally as the head of the Anti-Federalists, was totally not for this Constitution, believed too much power was into the uh, federal government, and was scared of it. So what is the thing that's going to guarantee that you, the individual, will not be taken advantage of by the United States government? Well, the Anti-Federalists and the Federalists came up with a solution, and it was called, technically the Anti-Federalists were the ones who were creating it, the Federalists agreed to it, it is the Bill of Rights, which is proposed. And in 1791, the Bill of Rights is signed containing 10 amendments that to the Constitution that protects your individual rights. So the Constitution not only tells you what the government is, it also tells you what rights you have. And then to reassure the Anti-Federalists, the Bill of Rights states that all powers that are not specified in the Constitution is re reserved for the states. So this is where we, we talk about states' power, right? We talk about federalism, right? The split between the state, the local, and the federal government. This is where, in the Constitution, if it does not specifically say that the federal government runs it, it's the state's responsibility. For example... In the Constitution, there is nothing that says education. Zero. Nothing. But, if it's not in the Constitution, whose responsibility is it? New York State. And that is the reason why that President Trump, right now, during this crisis, can't say, well, the schools are open. Well, you can't say that, Mr. President, uh, or federal government, because that's not under the Constitution. That's not your power. The power actually relies upon the states. And that is actually specifically what the anti-federalists had wanted. They wanted to make sure that state power would actually still be there, right? So the federal government also can't just say, well, New York State, you need to reopen right now. You have to do it, right? There was actually really, there was a serious debate a couple of days ago about that. But the governor of New York, which is Governor Andrew Cuomo, said, you don't have the power, federal government, to do that because it is not in the Constitution that says that you can do that unless something is under um, martial law, federal law. That goes into another aspect of it. But technically, again, that's a state's rights thing. You cannot tell a state to do that. Okay? So, what you're going to do today is this. I want you to use the Constitution, uh, sorry, use the uh, Bill of Rights. And how are you going to use it? You're going to take the Bill of Rights that I'm putting on our um, Google assignment, and then you are going to use it against scenarios. There are five scenarios. Scenarios are what? Thank you, Miss Miranda. Yes, they are stories, right? So you're doing five stories, right? And each one of those stories has to do with an individual right and an individual whose rights actually uh, either was infringed upon by the federal government, uh, and which Bill of Rights amendments protected these five individuals, or individuals, uh, like plural, not just one, um, which Bill of Rights protected them under the scenario. Now, you must give me full sentences. I will actually appear on the screen. You must give me full sentences. If you give me three words, you're not getting credit for it. Why? Let's look at it. Okay, so if I go to the scenarios, and here they are, beep, 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 and I come down, right? The first one is, before entering a suspect's home, a police officer must show a warrant. Now, what I have to do is go to the PDF, that's the Bill of Rights, and I have to figure out what amendment does this scenario up here refer to. Now, I am going to say, this amendment, right, so I could just type in here, this amendment refers to what? And then you must quote the amendment. Now, am I asking you to do the full amendment? No. I'm asking you to abbreviate, which is essentially is copy and paste, the part of the amendment that refers to 
a suspect actually whose police is kind of coming for a warrant right like i'm asking you to copy and paste it in there and tell me what amendment is if you don't do that it's not full credit you have two days to do this so i do not want like a three word thing if you get a three word thing chances are you'll be seeing my face again on another actually call probably on a google meet all right be safe be awesome we miss you guys Later.